place the OEE. But as you will see in the last part of the presentation, it is designed to do much, much more than this. Okay, so at the moment, let's concentrate on OEE. And in in order to calculate the OEE, the, you know, the formula it takes uh, three uh, factors into account. First one is performance. So in telling us with record how many pieces, how many parts you make during a particular shift day or period of time. And also we will compare to what amount of pieces the machine was designed or supposed to build during that time frame. And then it will calculate the availability of the, the equipment, uh, comparing how much time the machine actually ran compared to how much time it was supposed to run during that time. And then finally, uh, it will record the quality factor, which is how many good pieces you made and how many bad pieces you made during that uh, time frame. With this information, you will see that uh, intelligence is a very simple application, which is designed to calculate only a OEE at this moment. And for that goal, it records only whatever information is essential for, for this purpose. So it does not record anything that you don't need to for, for calculating your KPIs, your OEE at this moment. So we'll try to make it very, very simple, very simple, because we know that there are already uh, quite a few solutions out there in the market. So listening to our customer requirements, our customers' uh, uh, demands, we came up with a solution that intends to be very simple for calculating uh, OE at this moment, but also later on integrated into what we call uh, manufacturing intelligence. So um, if you ask yourself, OK, let's back go back to intelligence and the OEE calculation. So how does it do it? Well, we do it in a couple different ways. One is uh, manual data entry. For those facilities where the data is not coming automatically from PLCs, where PLCs are not supplying you with information that you need, such as downtime, good pieces, bad pieces, availability you can use intelligence for a completely manual data entry system. You will see that you can use touch screens or you can use tablets. You can use you know, a typical computer with a mouse and a, and a keyboard. You can use all those different types of devices for manually entering your OE. But you have the ability to obtain data automatically from, from your PLC network, then ATS intelligence can handle that as well. You will see during the demonstration that we have a simulation of a line where PLCs are collecting number of pieces made, downtime, and so on. And you'll see how intelligence is automatically configured to collect that kind of information from the job floor. Okay, so data is collected both manually and automatically. If you're asking, can we do a combination of yes? For example, let's say that the equipment, the PLC, tells you that this is a, a downtime caused by uh, a, uh, you know, a, this the the safety uh, button pressed by the operator. Well, the operator can get into the downtime management system and change the duration to whatever it, you know it, it really caused him to press the button. For example, a safety issue or the machine was. Uh, leaking oil, you name it. So we can collect data manually, automatically, and the combination of. And how can we use the data? Well, the data can be used to generate uh, a number of reports. You will see that you can have different reports that can break down the OEE by different factors where you can analyze the reasons why the, why the OEE was below your targets. So there are a few reports that we'll see in a few moments that give you that information, that uh, details. So you can see how many pieces you made, uh, what was the uh, the quality factor for during those times. So you can see what was causing the OEE to go below targets. Was it performance? Was it availability? Was it quality? Then you can react and uh, take the corrective measures to increase your productivity from that point forward. Once you locate the issues with the reports, then you 
will be able to in increase your OE because that is uh, the, that is the target. If you use OE as one of your KPIs, the goal is increasing your productivity. For example, we have a, a plan with an eighty-seven percent OEE, and we have a few lines. What can we do to increase the overall plant OEE? So we're seeing that we have you know one line here, which is under you know under eighty percent. So if we drill down and take a look, a closer look at this line to see what's causing that OE to be below target, we'll see that in this line we have you know four or five different machines. And when we take a look at the reports, we see that machine number two is the one that's giving us some issues. So okay, let's keep drilling down. Let's take a closer look at machine number two, and then we'll see that uh, the availability factor was fine. The performance factor was okay, but quality was down. So that will allow us to get into the details and see what what were the reasons for this machine creating bad parts. So we can take the appropriate measures to correct the quality on this machine, and then that will increase the OE not only for this machine but for the whole plant in general. Right. So. Now, what we'll do is we'll show you the, the actual uh, demonstration of the software. For this purpose, we have a system running on the cloud, on the ATS cloud, which is a fancy way to say that we have our applications on a, a service uh, method or business model, or SaaS, S-A-A-S. So at this moment, we're seeing that this is the software running on a server somewhere in the world. So if I want to run my data collection software, meaning that I don't need to have it running here on my computer. So what I will do, I will look I log into the the ATS cloud and I will run the, the application. So it's coming at this moment. Um, well you don't see it on the screen but you'll see that at this moment. We have the application is running here on, on screen. And you'll see that it's, it's quite fast, even though the, the system is running on different continent, uh, as a matter of fact. OK, so well, what we'll see here is that we already, we're already collecting data on the 3rd of December afternoon shift. Uh, that is because you know, my server is in, in Europe. And I'm looking at the can line number one. And the equipment I am taking a closer look at this moment is the, the palletizer on the on line C1. What you probably need also to know is that we have a line simulation application that is uh, pretending to be a network of PLCs running on the shaft floor, where you will see it's counting uh, the good counts, the bad counts of, of, uh, for quality purposes. Here we can simulate that the equipment is down for whatever reason. And when we do that, data collect from ATS intelligence, we'll see that information in uh, recording accordingly. Okay, so once we do that, we'll see that at this moment we are into the what we call the data collection module of ATS intelligence. First, I have to log in. I am the I am the intelligence user, and I can do a couple of things here. For example, I could I could select the date of for uh, for the information I am about to record. If, let's say that the person from the next shift comes over and logs in, all they need to do is click the shift plus and they will move on to the next shift, the night shift. I can select the equipment that I am uh, working on right now. Here I'm in the filling line, can line number one, the pallet dash of one. That is the equipment I am collecting information for at this moment. Also, I can see an overview which is the screen I am currently at. Here on the world overview, I can see on green tells me the productive time that I have had during the shift. The red shows downtime. That is time when the equipment was down, when the depilatizer C1 was down for whatever reason. Yellow is the time that I still have ahead of me in the, in the next shift. Okay, so whenever we have a downtime, it will be if I am collecting it automatically from the PLC network, that will be shown right here on the on the list. I can refresh it and then I can see 
the, the list of different downtimes that we had during this time. For example, last one was at 4.05. It took a little bit less than two minutes, and the reason was the foreign black main outlet. But if uh, I, as the operator, know that, that that was not the correct reason, because this is the reason that the PLC is telling me, what I would do is I would click the edit button and say, you know what, it was not a black line. It, you know, it was uh, my own downtime. I had to do a changeover because I had to change the, the, the product I was making. So that is the actual reason for the downtime. So now it's, it's been recorded as is. If for whatever reason the, you know, the, the PLC is not uh, providing me with that information, I can add downtime manually. For example, I would say that um, uh, today, from this time to this time, we had a uh, planet downtime. It was a maintenance uh, for, uh, I, I was going to clean the machine. I, I would uh, add that downtime manually, okay? So here we're showing that first we're running the application from the ATS cloud, and then we're getting data from a PLCs. We also uh, have the ability to record data manually. In, in the system, all right? So here we can see the uh, the production, how many pieces we're, we're making so far. I can add more uh, pieces made if I need to, or I can edit the records that I already have. I can also just uh, show the downtime screen specifically, and again, it's, it's giving me all the different downtimes times and reasons why we have the machine down during those times. So this is a very simple application for data collection where we get there from PLCs and also from the operator. Now, uh, for reporting purposes, we also have what we call our uh, ARS reporting application. This is a, let's say, the, the standard application for ATS uh, products. We use this application for reporting in multiple products. What you'll see here is that we have a list of reports, different set of reports available for you to run. We have a number of settings or filters that you can use at any given time to select what time frame you want to see, uh, what uh, you want to break down the your KPIs, your OE by shift, by day, by week, by month, what equipment you want to take a look at. You want to see a complete line. You want to see only one machine. You can see you can see the whole plan if if you like. And also what KPIs you, you want to monitor. Right now, we'll, as we mentioned before, all we're capturing right now is OAE with the, the three different factors. In the future, we'll do much more than that, okay? So once we run report, we'll see that uh, the information is it's gonna be displayed right here on the screen. And what I will do is, uh, for you know, better visibility purpose, I will hide uh, the filters, I'll hide the reports so we can see the report on full screen. So here I'm looking at the different uh, values for OE during the week, and we're seeing that in some cases, the problem that we're seeing here is that the OE is actually above target. And the problem we're seeing is that we are having higher performance than expected. So it's probably we are running the, the machine higher than the design speed, which may be a problem because, you know, I don't think it's a good thing that we're you know, overstressing the equipment. So that is something that our maintenance crew will need to take a look at, okay? So for any of the reports that we see, of course, you know, we can go into multiple pages if we need to. We can zoom in, zoom out if we, if we want to. We can also export all these different reports into, let's say, a PDF if we want to share this with our, with our managers or with the uh, with the team on the shop floor so they can see what's going on with the equipment. We can export into Excel and so on, All right? So we have multiple reports and you'll see here at the bottom we have a couple different tabs. One is called configurations, which means that you can save different filters or setting for a report. So whenever you need to run a report that you run quite frequently, you do not need to change the filters every time. So what you do is you create what we call a configuration and when you run this, you'll see that the filters will be selected automatically and will run the report with that information. Also, uh, subscriptions mean that you can 
subscribe to this report and say, you know what, I want, I want this report to be executed every day at 7 a.m. in the morning and email the results on a PDF format to the people in this list. So the time when you get to the, your desk and before you have your first uh, cup of coffee, the OE report from the previous day will be already waiting for you in your inbox. Right? So uh, we also have uh, quite a few reports. I will go over some of them um, uh, rather quickly. We have reports that give you the, the overview for one particular line. We have the 13-week report, which is very uh, common during the OE analysis phase. Here we're seeing that we have a problem in this particular week. So what's going on in this week? That takes us to run a particular report for this week only and see that block is most is, is causing most most of my issues. So if I click on this on this uh, report, I can get a full set of uh, drill down information. We have again chart that shows you downtime per day, per week, and so on. We have uh, let me look into the rest of the reports I have here. I have the, the production report that gives me for one particular line, equipment, or plant. What are the uh, production counts for each of the different parts that we made, or uh, materials, uh, part numbers, if you will? What was the total of uh, production counts the, on the KPIs for OEE? What was the amount for OEE availability, performance quality for each particular shift? and gives us very detailed information for each of those different lines, right? We have reports such as the article report. Gives you one particular part. So you want to see what your OEE is when you are making what particular part or you know, product. That can, that can give you an idea whether you are better off switching to this product or making modifications to, to the product, to the recipe, to the equipment. Because if you have a difference of OE between the different part numbers, then th there is something that uh, can be improved to increase productivity. All right. What I will do now is I will close this uh, brief demo by showing you what we call the, what the roadmap for the application. As we said earlier today, you know, we are working with OE right now, but we have uh, a, a wider vision than OE. So for, for this purpose, let me, let me show you what we call the, the roadmap for the, for the OE, uh, for the IntelliS application. So the roadmap starts with OE. That's where we started with, with intelligence. We have the ability to collect the factors or elements of the OE formula, both manual and uh, automatically. But the next step in the roadmap is we want to have the ability to acquire not only downtime, but any type of process data you, that you care about. For example, you have your PLCs collecting data on pressure, temperature, humidity, the speed of the line, anything that you care about and anything that can be used to calculate your KPI, your key performance indicators, then intelligence will be able to do that and report accordingly, right? So OE is just the start of our journey. Then once we have all the ability to collect different process variables, then we want to give you the ability to create your own formulas for your KPIs, right? Now we know that OEE is, you know, availability times performance times quality. Well, that is the first formula that you, that you have in your toolbox. Intelligence will give you the ability to create your own formulas. Let's say that you want to define your own KPIs using data that comes from, um, from the operators or from the PLCs you will be able to do that in the upcoming versions. Also, we want to give you the ability to know when something's going on on the shop floor. When your OE levels go below your target, when your quality goes down, when your process variables uh, go through a threshold that you define, then we want you to know about it right away. We want to give you the ability to receive real-time uh, alarms. 
via email, via your SMS. So you have all the French that you need to react instantaneously to any condition that is out of tolerance or is out of, uh, out of uh, your, your specifications. So that is something that also we're planning on doing in the, in the upcoming versions of ATS intelligence. In addition to that, we want to give you the ability to exchange data with Label 4 with your ERP system because not only you want to download your orders from your ERP so uh, your operators have the batch number, the production rates, uh, the, the information that they need in order to make those parts or your products on the shop floor, but also you want to feed back your KPIs, your KPVs, your productivity, your production, your bad parts, your good parts to your ERP. So this way you are making your manufacturing process more flexible, quicker, information uh, as soon as it becomes available. We want to give you the ability to have a dashboard that you can present on a computer or on a projector just like on the example here on the screen because you want to give uh, people the ability to have a long-term analysis. That you want to give them all the information that is available, but also not, not only for historical purposes, but also we want to give you the ability to predict the future, not by uh, uh, guessing, but by using tools like data mining. In uh, uh, There are tools already available like Excel or Cognos that allow you to predict future based on past behavior on past performance. So that is something that we are working also on intelligence. We want to give you the ability to use mobile devices to not only collect data but run your uh, reporting application from there. So mobility is a factor, all right? So the main goal for intelligence and uh, you know th that's where the, the name of the product comes from is that we want to be your solution for manufacturing intelligence. Not only OE, OE is only the beginning. We want you to be able to collect and analyze all the information that is generated in your shop floor. Okay? There's a lot of information that is collected but is never uh, recorded or analyzed for improvement actions. Intelligence will support manufacturing intelligence and manufacturing 2.0 by using web application web services by uh, having a mobility embedded into the into the solution where you can you can be anywhere collecting data or looking at reports but also give you the ability to see be, be very nimble if you want to start collecting data today or tomorrow you can have that by using the the SaaS model you know by connecting to our ATS cloud and running our solution from there right so again ATS intelligence right now is giving you access to recording in analyzing your OE. However, this is just the beginning. We want you to take a look at uh, our goals, our main vision, and hopefully you will decide to take the journey with us. That back to you. Let's see if we have any questions from the audience. Thank you, Francisco. It was a very nice presentation. Uh, let me just uh, share to pause for now. So I want to ask our end users or manufacturer representatives, they can take part in, in this poll. And uh, once we are finished with the uh, voting, we will share the result with you. And that's just the first one. So the data is filling in. And meanwhile, I can publish the, the other one. So who already voted? Well, the first one can try voting on how do you collect and observe for your OE data. So basically, it's now all around the OE, but you can also tell us more about it. How do you do that? Right, so you should be able also to see the results now. And the next step is I will share the question and answer session or pot or window where you can basically type your questions to us and Francisco will answer them. 
Well, at least I will try. Yeah. So just to summarize, we have 87.5% uh, of, of you have your OE as a part of KPIs and 42.8% of you use automated data collection and then 28.5% use manual data collection while retrieving the data from paper into spreadsheet or special applications or production systems. And then both 14.2% uh, not observing OE at all or with the manual data collection and evidence in paper format. So we have first questions here, Francisco. Not sure if you can see them. I think the first question is uh, how do we compare to Aussiesoft PI server and what are the main differences? I wonder if uh, Dr. Hapa can help me with that uh, Question, Michael, are you aware of the differences with OSSEYSOFT? Let me just uh, enable Michael to be able to, to speak. I think Michael is not able to join us at the moment. At least I don't see any ability to speak at the moment. All right. So, so, so uh, for Gert, if if you allow me, I will get back to you on with that with with that particular answer. All right. There's another question. In what percentage of your customers use are, are using uh, the software? in the beverage industry. Our, our customers in the industry, for example, Carlsberg and uh, are the three companies with AB and Bev, use different applications that we have assisted in, in the developing. In fact, these are part of a, let's say, complex MES system that sometimes it becomes too complex to manage. And that, that was part of the reason why we decided to de develop our own manufacturing intelligence suite because we were trying to make this as simple as possible for collecting information. All right, looks like we have uh, one more question coming from from Gerd. And that is about what interfaces with uh, ERP we're, we're planning on, on developing. Right, one of our goals is supporting uh, manufacturing 2.0 by becoming a uh, service-oriented architecture solution. So we can support uh, web services that will allow us to, uh, to connect to multiple you know, different applications. We are looking into uh, uh, business to business XML. We want to be able to use uh, 
communication with SAP is one of the main targets right here. Uh, we're trying to make it in, in a way that uh, we, we want to follow standards. We want we don't want to be specific to one particular ERP. We want to follow uh, standards, and for that we have uh, business partners. So you know, we work with SAP. We work with uh, Siemens with with MES, and and for that we have different uh, you know standards that we want to follow. We support the ISA 95 standard, and as part of the MESA uh, board, we want to support. You know, the standards uh, for implementation into M MES and ERP. Another question from uh, Nenad. Uh, is the data collection automatic or manual? It, it depends on, on the site. Sometimes where we have small shops, all the data is manual. Sometimes we have large uh, facilities where data is controlled by PLCs, but they don't have the infrastructure such as a PLC network to collect all the data on a data concentrator, for example. Right? So it, it, it depends on, on the, the company and all depends on the infrastructure, but also on the vision that the company had when they first implemented their network of PLCs. We believe that there will always be a manual factor because the PLCs have only limited amount of information available to them, which is, you know, I know the machine is stopped because somebody pressed a, a button. So the PLC will tell you that, but they don't really know the real reason behind it the root cause. That's why we allow the, the operator to uh, use manual entry to modify the information provided by PLC. How deep the in details customers go? We need all the information that is relevant to find out what the root cause of the problem is. Right? So we go to to, we have two levels of downtime. What is one is the, the top reason, and the the second level is the the actual reason. And for that, we have a reason tree that you can define in your um, in your application. If you allow me, let me see if I can show you the configuration that is performed on what we call the the cockpit cockpit module. So you can see that you can define your own reason tree. You don't need to follow anybody else's uh, reasoning or or experience. You, you can define your own. Uh, on it. Let me show you here. We have equipment downtime. We have the uh, the reason tree. Francisco, just uh, just the one thing you need to share your screen before you you will. How about that? Um, so now here you'll see that you you can define your own recent tree. You can, uh, there are let's say the three, three different levels. One is what is the the top level? Is it my own downtime uh, caused by? Is, it, is this by a, an external entity? This, is this plan or something else? So, I mean, in each one of them, you can define different statuses or different levels. For example, here on their own, I have breakdown, the machine broke down. Why? Well, we have different reasons, right? So this is our, let's say, standards that the ISA 95 uh, suggest. And you know, we always recommend the following standards, but you have the ability to define your own reasons and you you collect the information that is relevant to uh, supply you with this information. All right, I need to stop my sharing so I can continue re looking at the rest of the questions, Martin. Good. 
Martin, I think that uh, there are no more questions from the audience. All right, so if there are no more questions, then uh, I'd like to thank you, Francisco, for your presentation, for answering all those questions. But uh, I think I see another question. And if customers ask you to ever uh, implement failure mode and defect mode? Well, the, the failure mode is typically just for finding out uh, for downtime management. Uh, for defect mode, we have other, let's say, applications that deal with quality. If you are interested in that, we can give you uh, more information about different types of uh, quality play applications that we use uh, for different purposes, for dimensional, for uh, uh, visual inspection, and, and so on. But uh, at this particular level, you know, most of the downtime is managed with the, with the failure mode. All right, so I think you're ready to finish. And if there are no further questions, then again, let me thank you, Francisco, for your presentation. And let me thank you to all of you who just joined us and hope it was an interesting session for you. And if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. There are also uh, some brochures for download to so now shared on the screen, so you can you can download them for your convenience and uh, read them. We will also send you a recording of this webinar, so you can, for instance, uh, watch it uh, uh, when you have time and when you need to see anything again. And yeah. That's it. As I said, thank you again for coming and Francisco, thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, everybody.